Hi, Judy from Bungalow Quilting and Yarn here. And today we're gonna to talk about how to do minky cowls and minky scarves. They're super easy. In fact, they're probably easier than you ever realized they were gonna be. Um, they probably take you about 15 minutes to sew the whole thing together. If you're in a quilt shop that has got high quality cuddle by Shannon, um, which is a minky type fabric, you can ask those shops to cut you a 12 inch strip. A 12 inch strip will actually be 60 inches wide, and there's where the length of your scarf comes in. It's the 60 inch width. So you only need 12 inches of the uh, piece of cuddle that you've chosen. Um, most of the time, this stuff ranges $20 a yard or slightly less. So you're getting a beautiful cowl or scarf for far less than $10 even. Um, so it's a fabulous gift for somebody. And you always need those little gifts for you know, nieces, nephews, cousins, you need them for teacher's gifts, you need them for, you know, just anybody that you know that you need a last minute gift for. So I'm going to um, show you the cuddle that we have in our shop at Bungalow Quilting and Yarn, and you can order it online. Of course, we'd much rather see your smiling face in the shop, but you can do that. You can order it online, we'll ship it right to you. So we have lots of different cuddle products in the shop. This one is a luxe cuddle. It it looks like it's done in strips like a, like a mink coat would have would be done it's very beautiful um it comes in multiple colors this is the luxe cuddle fawn it looks like an actual fawn this one is really fun to do with quilts that you know so many fabrics have deer prints in them now and you can do a strip of the deer print or you can do a strip of this or you could do a a scarf or a cowl with that um, we also have the fox um this is the rusty Fox. This looks like actual real fur. It's so beautiful. And we have it in the, the fox in the amber taupe colorway, and we also have it in pewter. Um, this is a Arctic Lynx, which is absolutely gorgeous. This one is just plain fun. It's not made to look like an animal. It's just fun, kind of ripply luxe cuddle in a navy uh, and cream. And then this is the Angora. This would make a really lovely cowl scarf or throw. Keep in mind that these are also beautiful for throws. You would need maybe a yard and a half um, and then you could back it with another piece of cuddle or you could back it with fabric. Um, this looks like it's called plumage. It looks like kind of like a chicken or like feathers. Here's that fox in the pewter. This one's extremely, extremely popular. Um, we also have the rosebud cuddle and this for many years has been our biggest seller and this comes in lots of different colors because you can do baby quilts and, and the backings of quilts with it. And there's the Arctic Lynx. That's just absolutely beautiful. This one here is really fun for my 14 year old girls. <laughs> they just absolutely love it for pillows in their rooms, um, for, for scarves and cowls for themselves too. Um, we have something that looks like a llama up here and we have what's called rabbit, which is just kind of a like a tie-dyed almost furry piece. We have the Lux Cuddle Glam, which would be a beautiful table runner or a cowl or a tree skirt. Um, and then we have, oh, this this Lux like frost. It's frosted and then it also has coloration to it. Um, this is the 1950s movie star pink Lux Cuddle Hide which is absolutely stunning. And now this is just, we're just scratching the surface of all the different ones that we have here in the shop. Oh, we have Pony, which I think I wanna do a Jessie the Cowgirl type vest out of this. It's really fun. I, we also did a butterfly chair out of this. So these are just some of the different ones that we have, lots and lots of really pretty ones. And um, probably one of the biggest selections of cuddle, I would guess, of all the quilt shops in the state. We have just the regular, your basic minky in just your flat, you know, not as high of a loft or not as high as a, of a nap in all these different colors here. Just lots and lots of different colors. So, like I said, you can come into the shop. BungalowQuiltingAndYarn.com is our website. You can peruse all the different ones. But like I said, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about doing a, a scarf for a cowl. Here's my 12-inch piece. It's The fabric is 60 inches wide, so I cut it across. I had to fold it because, my, of course, my cutting table is not 60 inches wide. Um, and so it is perfectly straight because I'm a quilt shop and I have all the right equipment, I can cut this perfectly straight. So that's why it makes sense for you while you're right in the shop to ask them to cut you a 12 inch strip so that all you have to do when you get home, all you have to do is just 
sit down at your sewing machine and put it together. Now the cut edge sheds, the cut edge. Remember I said that, the cut edge. The rest of it does not shed. So once we at, our, at the shop have cut it for you and let it shed and we've taken it outside and shaken it, you're not going to have shedding at home. Okay, that's all been done for you if you get it cut. Don't expect that to happen at big box stores. They won't cut them, cut it perfectly straight for you. They're going to cut it fast and they're gonna let you have to worry about squaring it up when you get home. And they're also not gonna take it out and shake it for you. So remember that, support your small businesses because we'll go the little extra mile for you. So the, here's my piece. All right, so I'm gonna take this piece back to the sewing room um, and then show you what we're gonna do with it. Like I said, it's 60 inches wide. So that's the actual length of the scarf. Okay, so that's the length, and I'm gonna show you what you're gonna do. See, now this is the opposite side of it, the wrong side. It is a polyester, so, um, and this does not have a lot of stretch because it's Shannon. It's a high quality piece. Um, so you're gonna sew it with the right sides together, and this is really easy to sew on, and we're gonna put our walking foot on our sewing machine. Okay, so like I said in the beginning, we have this long strip. It's a 60 inch long strip. It's 60 inches because we cut the entire width of the fabric, all right? We cut 12 inches by width of fabric. So it's folded in half, and this is as wide as it's going to be. You could make it wider if you wanted to, and if you wanted to make it wider, you'd have to cut more than 12 inches. So if you'd cut 15 inches, it would be obviously a little bit wider. Um, we're going to leave both of these ends, the short ends, open. All right, so these are the short ends. We're going to leave those open. And we're also going to leave a spot big enough for your hand. Actually, when it comes right down to it, I'm probably going to leave something a little bit wider than that to turn it right sides out. The official Shannon word is that the pins need to be going, instead of perpendicular, you need to have them parallel to the edge, the cut edge, when you're sewing. You also want to turn up your machine stitch length. On a Bernina, I'm at about a two. I'm gonna turn it all the way up to about a three, a little maybe a little over a three. And I'm just using regular cotton thread. That's not gonna be a factor. And I'm also going to sew more than a quarter inch seam. I'm gonna sew about a half inch, three eighths to a half inch seam. So those are the biggies. Those are the things to remember. Using your walking foot, putting your pins in so that they're parallel, increasing your length on your sewing machine stitch and doing a half inch seam allowance. Now, when your pins are going parallel, you actually need to have them this close together. The, the tip of the pin needs to touch the head of the pin in front of it. All right, that's how close they have to be. You really wanna be careful because it's a fabric with a nap. You want it not to slip and slide. Some of the products by Shannon are easier to sew than others, some are harder and it's just a question of getting to know which one you're doing and getting really comfortable and used to it. So I'm gonna clip this thread. I'm gonna backstitch on this because it is gonna be a point of stress because we are going to be turning it using, we're not gonna turn it right sides out using this opening. I'm gonna show you exactly what it is that we are going to do um, with that edge. So you can see that I'm doing a bigger seam allowance than just a quarter inch. Now you also have to check your underside here. Always be rechecking your underside to make sure that you're catching all the layers. Because like I said, there is some slipping. And people will say, oh, I've worked with that stuff. They come into the shop and I'll say, have you seen the Shannon Cuddle? And they'll say, oh, I've worked with that stuff. It's awful. I really don't want to sew with that again. Well, chances are, if you had an awful experience, you number one, nobody ever took the time to show you how to do it, and, and that's too bad, because um, that's why I'm making this video, because I really want to pe see people to see how wonderful this product is and how beautiful things will turn out. Either you didn't have somebody showing you or you used something that wasn't a product by Shannon Fabrics. You probably used a product that was maybe from a big box store um, that was some type of a lesser grade of uh, plush fabric. So. I'm gonna to continue to sew like this and I'm gonna to continue to check that I'm catching both layers underneath. And that's partly too why we make a wider seam allowance with this stuff because you wanna make sure that you are catching all your layers underneath. When I get to this opening, I'm gonna back stitch. I'm actually gonna stop before I get to the point where my pins are because I think I'm gonna need something just a little bit bigger than the size of my hand. So I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna back stitch. I'm gonna take this out. 
I'm gonna clip, and then I'm gonna start up again over here where I've got this pin. Make sure I've got all my layers so that I'm going through all my layers. And back stitch again, take that pin Just out. Just sew with velvet, the cross fiber. So then the cross fibers are um, pushing against each other on the velvet, and so then you have to, velvet is very tricky, you have to pin it very, very well, or you have to baste it. And so um, some of these cuddle fabrics can be a little bit like that. All right, so we're almost to the end. Almost to the end. And then again, like I said, we're going to um, make a back stitch on the end. Now, like I said before uh, as well, have your shop cut it and make sure they square it so that your piece is perfectly straight so that when you go home, you won't have to do any trimming. It'll save you a ton of time. We will do that at Bungalow. We will actually... Um, cut it just exactly perfect for you so that all you have to do is go home and sew. It's just one of the nice things that we do for our customers. All right, so now you've got this opening here, all right? And you've got these two ends open here. You've got a little tunnel. So what you're gonna do is you're going to stick your hand in to one end, all right? And you're going to grab the opposite end. Never mind the fact that we've got this opening for turning here. We're going to deal with that later, all right? So when you grab that opposite end here, make sure that that seam line doesn't get twisted around. If you want a Mobius, then don't worry about it. But I don't want a Mobius. I just want this to be a cowl. So I'm pulling this all the way back, keeping my seam allowance at the top so that I can match it with my seam allowance here. See that? Now my seam allowance here is here. So I know that I haven't twisted it. So I pulled it back onto itself. I telescoped it. It's going to look like this. All right, so it's telescoped. Then you're going to move your little sewing table off and you're going to put this like a sleeve over your sewing arm. You can pin it if you want to. I've done this enough times that I don't need to, but I think if I were somebody that was just starting to work with this on this end, I would pin it. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew it all the way around. This part isn't gonna ravel because it's a selvage. Remember, we cut selvage to selvage, so you're not gonna have any raveling or shedding along this edge. It's gonna come out really, really nicely. Keep sewing all the way around. I hope I'm demystifying this for you because it's once you learn to do this, you're gonna everybody in your life is gonna be getting a cowl. <laughs> it's too bad men don't wear cowls because boy oh boy, we could even make them for the men folk. All right, so I went around a couple more times around a little bit extra stitching. All right, now we're gonna find that opening. Now where did we leave that opening for turning? Right here. So we find that opening and you're gonna pull the whole thing out. It's like magic. It's like totally like magic. Okay, now we would go and we would slip stitch this with a regular hand stitching needle. Now I'm gonna put this cowl on and I'm gonna show you. Isn't that darling? You did that in less than, what, 20 minutes? And you had the quilt shop, bungalow quilting and yarn, hopefully, cut this piece for you so you didn't have to do any work. You just came home, sat down at your sewing machine and finished it. You've got a gift that cost less than $10 and it looks like a million bucks. So we will see you at the bungalow.